Awesome. Hello. Welcome to the Net Girls. This is episode 177. It's October the 6th, 2013. And I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. I am Laura, also known as Lala. And yeah, so hi. (laughs) I don't have anything witty to say at the beginning. Not that I ever do, but you know. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so it's been a quiet week. It has been. But we will get into jibber jabber later on. What you knitting? I am knitting on a pair of socks. It's my only thing that's currently being knit on the needles. I should show them. I'm wow. trying to get to the end of the row. So I'm using some high high sharps in size one or one and a half. I can't remember. They're probably one and a half because that's what I tend to buy. And they are out of Sadie Ruin's lovely yarn. It is her um, Daddy Sock, which is an 80-20 superwash merino nylon blend in the Welcoming Worm colorway. And Sadie is the genius behind Knitter's Nightmare Yarn. Yep. And that's all. That's all I got. See? They're is pretty. Is that sock number two? This is sock number two. I had sock number one somewhere. I don't know where it went. It'll turn back up sometime it was in this room it's in this room <laughs> somewhere that's it's a kind of a big room though <clears throat> yeah but it was sitting beside me when i was skyping with the nieces this morning and now i don't know where it went i don't know because i was cleaning <laughs> rearranging things <laughs> yes so that i had a room on the desk um well i had hand carted a little bit of roll and um they were taking up too much room, so I moved. I um, was rearranging things. I don't know where. I don't know where the. It's probably like in my lap. No, it's not. I don't know. Where, oh, it's in the bag I bet. So funny story. The other day, I was like, I have not seen my pigeon bag in forever. I wonder where it is, dude. It's what I've been carrying. <laughs> <laughs> but it like never comes out of my purse lately. So I've been carrying it around in the pigeon bag for like. Um, I don't know. This is like the third month I think I've been working on these socks. I think I started them back in July. So, here's the first one. It's just an afterthought heel. Toe up. So, I'm not very far in. I'm hoping that I'll get some... um, So, I have to test at work this week, and I have one child. um, Because I'm doing a read aloud. So, I'm kind of hoping that I... um, get some time during that to knit a little bit so we'll see because I can read and knit at the same time somewhat and it's just me and one other person right. so and you're not there's, being tested you are testing a child yes and there's not um huh sorry my gmail just decided to sign me out it of, did, uh, mine did too the a little bit ago <laughs> Like what just happened? Um, yeah, so I'm just there. There's no one else for them to cheat off of, so there's not a lot of uh, monitoring that needs to happen. Right. And I don't like just sitting there staring at them. If I can not just sit there and stare at them. Well, you're less impatient if you have something else to sort of occupy your mind. So. Or and I'm, also, like me sitting staring at you is not a good testing situation. This is true. <laughs> so. No pressure. <laughs> okay. But that's it. Hopefully, I'll get a little bit more done on them this week. Hopefully, I'll get them finished this week. But with Spinzilla, I don't know what's going to happen. This is true. But I mean, they're just plain old socks. It's not like you're on a deadline. So. No. Uh. Uh-uh. Um. I have got quite a bit on the needles, actually. Cool. I'm glad someone's carrying the show. <laughs> that's a nice change, right? <laughs> I never carry the show. Laura well, and I joke about. about that because I feel like the majority of the time Laura has, I don't know, 50% more progress on things than I do. I feel like that's not true at all. So, um, yeah, so I just I joke. So we go does. back and forth. Yeah. So I'm working on <laughs> socks in Patton's Croy in the rag stripes colorway. Oh, I like those. And I did ask Michael if he wanted them and he gave me a look and said no. Um, because these are not manly to him, apparently. He, the only socks he would wear if I made them are plain black, and that's not going to happen, because <laughs> I'm not a masochist. 
So um, anyway, this is Patton's Croy. You can get it generally at your local Michaels or Hobby Lobby or what have you. And it's 75% superwash and 25% nylon. And this is sock number two. I finished sock number one. Um, oh, wow. I did the Fish Lips Kiss Heel. Cool. And uh, was able to keep the striping going without too much interruption. And it's the same on the second sock. So I just cool. turned the heel while I was watching Duck Dynasty earlier. Did you watch this week's? No, I'm just watching no. past seasons. Um, I bought the seasons on Amazon Prime. Hmm. And uh, I'm watching season two right now. And gotcha. I, I know it's staged and silly, but I don't care because Psy makes me laugh. So that's the first thing I'm working on. The second thing, I'm also working on the Frankenfingers out of Sadie's Yarn, but I haven't made any progress this week, so I didn't bring it to show because I was trying to get a couple of other things finished cool. and off and done. So the other thing I'm working on is the Delancey Cardi. Let me show you a picture of that. This is by Alexis Winslow. And it's um, a striped sort of knit on the bias sweater. And it's one of the few patterns I'm, I've come across where it's um, written specifically for plus size. So there's regular sizing up to like 42, I think. And the plus starts at, I want to say 48, no, 45, sorry. And it goes all the way up to 58. So cool. I'm using two different colors of Fat Squirrel Fibers. Uh, DK and there's kind of a lot of craziness going on because it was you start out by knitting two triangular panels that will go over the sides of your hips like this and then you join them together in the middle and then this the middle is the center back so it'll be like this okay so I just joined them and did a few rows and then I put it down this will probably go with me to rhyme back. Oh, I did start on the next set of stripes. I didn't think I have, but I guess I have. And cool. um, I'm doing this on a US 9. The colors are uh, medallion red, this main color. And then the darker red is Leslie is a lush. So I am enjoying that very much. I'm just, I didn't knit on it a ton this week because I was working on some other stuff, so... And I've got everything kind of shoved in one bag, which is not good. So anyway, those are my works in progress. Cool. What do you have for FOs? I have one FO. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's the most ridiculous thing ever. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Shut up. Oh. I didn't show Leslie on purpose. Oh, no, wow. So this is Jinx. Jinx is a little cat. constipated. Shut up! Why are you gonna be mean? None of hurt his feelings. Oh, poor Jinx. Look at his butt tail. <laughs> this is my favorite part. It is silly. I do like. It is a cute little stuffy. I just think the way that you did the mouth makes him look a little constipated. That's all. This is the okay. So I did the mouth five times. <laughs> Now you've hurt my feelings. Oh, I'm so sorry. But I think he looks fine. I think he's rocking it. His mouth was too small at first. I had to fix it. I don't know. Julia wanted pink eyes. So she got this it. is for my niece. She wants um she wants Alice, my other niece, who's getting it in the same color way, but um there's gonna be a couple modifications to have yellow eyes, because yellow is Alice's favorite color. Oh. So, um, this is out of Dancing Dog Dye Works in the Frankenweenie colorway. Looks like that. It is their Waltz Force stitch, which I think they might have replaced with a different um, blend. And it also had a chartreuse mini. So there was 105 yards of a chartreuse mini and then 215 yards, 218 yards of the variegated and I thought I could get two out of one skein 
the combination skeins, but I'm not certain that I can. Um, I have 50 grams left over of the variegated and 25 left over of the green. So I'll have plenty of the green, I think, um, but I might run out of the variegated. I weighed another skein of this that I had, and it weighed 108 grams. Can you just so, make the next one a wee bit smaller? Um, like I might be able to, or what I could do, which I think is what I'm really going to do, is I'm going to make the ears and the tail, which weigh 8 grams, out of the chartreuse. Okay. That would work, too. So I think they'll be fine. Yeah. Um, so this is Jinx. <laughs> He's got lots of pieces. Actually, I love, um, he wasn't that bad. He's just got pieces. Yeah, um, the arms, the, ta the tail, and the ears are knit separate. The rest is knit all in one piece, which is very nice. Oh, and the face is knit separate as well, and then whip stitched on. Um... I think what I'll do for the tail next time is I might pick up those stitches yeah. and knit out that way. And I might do the same for the ears. I'm going to look and see how to do that. His arms are attached really cleverly using a three needle bind off type method, mm -hmm. which I really, really liked. Um, so that was very cool. And I'm out of polyfill now, so now I have to order more polyfill. The eyes are from 6060, which is an Etsy seller, who's, and so is the nose who's got lots of uh, cool stuff, and that's about it. Susan does a wonderful job writing the pattern. Um, it was very easy to follow, lots of pictures, so that part was good. I just, I lack good finishing skills. I just Yay. don't think you enjoy the finishing as much, that's all. No! <laughs> Not even a little! <laughs> I'm just going to put him in front of me from now on. That but, should be your new avatar. Um, no, I like my avatar. And my avatar right now is sheep bombed. Honestly. So that's pretty cool. Um, so, I think he's cute. He's don't be cute. Ha don't be hating. I didn't say he wasn't cute. I just Haters said he looked gotta a little hate. constipated, that's all. Mm. So I just hope Julia likes him. I I'm think sure she, she will. will. I think she will. Hip hip. Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> anyway, so one done, one to go. One in a week? Not bad. Uh, a little over a week, but yeah. The goal is to have them to them in their uh, Halloween package, but I don't know that that's going to happen. And he counts for the ha Halloween cal as well. Because he's Not definitely we very <laughs> Halloween y. So, yep. That's it for me. That's all I got. <laughs> I'm very lame this week. Not really. You did other stuff. <laughs> like sleep. <laughs> You're saving up your energy for Spinzilla. I was sick, so. Yeah, that's true. I checked on Laura <clears throat> the day after we recorded, and I was like, hey, how you doing? And she's like, I got sent home from school. <laughs> I don't feel good. So. That's true. Yeah, 9 o'clock in the morning. So, okay, I have three FOs, although one of them isn't really truly from this week. One of them was from last week, and that's this. This is the N3's baby sweater. Oh, so cute. And this What's is that out of? This is out of Frog Tree, um, the 50% superwash, 50% non-superwash wool that we got at oh, the um, class. Oh, it's, um, Hank's got that on sale right now. I yeah. should get some of that. I got Actually, I got this at Hank of Yarn, but, um, what's her name? Cat Bordy gave us a sample skein in the class we took at T&A from her. How many skeins did you use? I used under two for this. Okay. And I, I might get some. Peta no, it's, is it Petaboo? No, that's her sock yarn. Mm, no, it's not Petaboo. I don't have the, the label here, so I don't know what it is. Okay. I don't think. Or, yeah, actually, I think I might. In my pile of stuff. Oh, yeah, here it is. It's Utopia. There we go. But you have another one. You could do a little matching hat. Yeah, I have this plus like a fifth of the last skein. Oh, cool. Is that the newborn size? Son of a... Um, yeah, well, this is the smallest size. But okay. I didn't... I purposely used a larger needle and larger yarn, so it would uh -huh. look more like a three to six month. And I need to put buttons on it, but other than that, it's done. It did, ha it did call to go 
a little longer, but I felt like it was already long enough for a baby. Um, yeah. A three to six month size, so I was done. I do cool. need to put buttons, three buttons on it, and or I did the boy sweater a while back, so I just need to put buttons on it and send Karen's package off because she's at 33 weeks with twins, so another three weeks and she'll be considered full term. So. Wow. Yeah, I need to get on some stuff. So I need to get that sent to her, and then I finished, I started and finished since last night, these slippers that um, Emily who Fancy Pants had made. And she wore them when I was with her and Jamie at Shenandoah. Well, she didn't wear them at the festival, but when we were at <laughs> Jamie's house. And they're the Coco Knits ballet flats, pleated ballet flats. Cute. And they are super fast. I think that the pair took me four hours, and part of that wow. four hours was just figuring out the pleats because they are a little like. It's hard to envision it. You just have to listen and do what the pattern says, and then it yeah. makes sense. So I made a pair, and they're not quite the right. My feet are bigger than the blocker, so. Um, That's super cute. Yeah, they're really fast and super cute, and the pleats go in the opposite direction for the other um, ballet flat. So I used Vintage Chunky, and I got that at Bull Bears yesterday morning with my friend wow. Sue's. So I got this in the red color, of course, and then I got a teal color, too, because if I liked them, I was going to make it another pair. So Cool. I think this would be cute. Like, I know Amy Beth last year made slippers for everybody on her Christmas mm -hmm. list, and I think this would be a really good, although it's not really a man-friendly pattern, I think it no. is definitely a, a female pattern, but it's a cute, quick gift for maybe the ladies on your list. Yeah, definitely. So I do have two. Just I don't have the other. I had a fake foot, plastic foot, and it rolled away, and I'm not going to get it. So I do have two. They were super fast. You do knit the sole first, and then you pick up stitches, and they're short rows and all that. So Cool. And it's knit all the way from a lady's size uh, 5 up to 11. So it is sized really well, and it was fast, so I enjoyed it. And again, Good. this is um, Barocco Vintage Chunky, so it's acrylic and wool. And then hmm. on Friday night, I cast on out of, jeez oh, Louise, I'm so not organized today, whatever. Um, I cast on a windsheaf hat from... Stephen West and finished it and this is out of Wandering Wool Joelle from Wandering Wool this is her Heights Worsted and this is for Michael my significant other who never asks for anything hand knit and it is long enough to cover his ears which is what he requested so it's knit a little longer than the pattern suggests um, at before you start the crown decreases and it's really soft it almost feels like it's got some cashmere in it but it is just wool um, so I really like this base. Cool. And the, I think the grays are nice and unisex. So I told him he couldn't have it until I showed it on the podcast. So now he can have it. Yay. And this, I think, took, I want to say, five, maybe six hours. Um, it's a really easy pattern once you once you get started. So that those are my FOs for the week. And it goes back in there. So, spinning. You've been cleaning off bottoms. I have, but I have nothing to show for it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I haven't cleaned anything off yet. So, I had started spinning, um, and I think I've showed both these things on the show. I had started spinning uh, Into the World's Bat, and I can't even tell you the colorway, back in, uh, during Tour de Fleece, a oh. Melendrum. And I decided that it was time to get it off the Melendrum. So that is on the Lendrum. It probably has an ounce still left to go. So that's really going to be what I strive to do tonight. Because um, I'm okay if I have two wheels mm -hmm. for Spinzilla. It's just just having the mini spinner. Because I don't have a lot of bobbins for the mini spinner. Yeah. Uh, might not be the best move ever. Um, so 
that is getting cleaned off. The other thing that I've been working on, which I don't know if I'm going to get it done or not, we'll see how my night goes, is I started a loop bat on the sidekick right after SSK, and I probably had an ounce done, and it was a 5.3 yeah. ouncer, and I know I've shown that on the show. It was um, Lovely Lala was the colorway. It was from one of her clubs, and it went from a purple to a gray to a charcoal to a light green, which is what I'm on right now, to a purple. And um, I don't know that I'm going to be able to fit all 5.3 ounces on one bobbin. Yeah, It's going to be really tight. But I worked on it for four hours yesterday and probably another hour to today when I watched the Kansas City Chiefs play. So, I don't know if that's going to get done. Well, if it um, doesn't, it doesn't. But it, yeah, and that's it. Like, I, you know, I can make do, and I still have the ladybug too, but my ladybug really just likes spinning thicker weight singles. Um, although I did buy a new drive band, so I could replace the drive band again. But, um, it likes thicker weight singles, so I'm not going to force it to do things that it doesn't like to do. But I did get the Hello Yarn that I was spinning last week done. Pretty. Well, so I had, it's a two-ply, and it's a superwash merino, and I added more twists to the plies on purpose, but now that I'm looking at it, I probably didn't add enough. Um... And so I felt like I was treadling, treadling, treadling for forever. Mm -hmm. But I got to the end of the first bobbin, and there's probably an ounce left. At least an ounce. Maybe an ounce and a half. Yeah. Um, left on the other bobbin. Yeah. So I'm going to wait till after Spinzel is over to ply that up. I'm going to make just a center pole cake. Yeah. And go from each end. It's, it had a lot of this um, braid had a lot of white in it. It was the majority of it was white with speckles of green, red, charcoal, and pink in it. And so I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. It's not how I thought it would come out at all, and it definitely looks like ribbon candy. Yeah, I agree. So um, this is 240 yards. So I probably will end up with around 400 of a heavy fingering weight. Yeah. That's still pretty. Thank you. So that's it for me for spinning. Not a lot to show, but... Next week you should expect to see lots of spinning. Yeah, I don't know that you'll see a lot of plied spinning, right. but you'll see lots of bobbins. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. I probably will ply mine as I go, which isn't going to make it the most... I just... I don't... We'll talk more about Spinzilla once we get to favorite things. Um... So I did spin a little bit this week. When I went to Shenandoah Valley Fiber Fest, one of the main things I wanted to get was at Nitty and Colors booth, her husband does the, uh, Derek does subterranean woodworks and he makes Turkish spindles. And I had been sort of in the market for a Turkish spindle and due to a family emergency, they weren't able to go. So I wasn't able to get one there, but he ended up updating on Sunday night, um, this past Sunday, so I bought one on his update, and I got like a purple heart, a curly maple, Ooh, pretty. and I don't remember what the shaft is made out of, but, so I took the, um, poonies that I got from Gourmet Stash, yep, Gourmet Stash, that's it, and there were two, um, shaded yellow ones in here, and then these two made up a quarter of an ounce, so I've spun an eighth of an ounce on my Turkish and I really really like the Turkish um, I, I definitely prefer this to a traditional drop spindle um, I, don't, I couldn't tell you why it just feels like less work to me it feels like less back and forth with taking the thing off the hook and then twirling and then redoing it. I don't know. For me, it just seems like less work. Plus, when you... See, that's so funny to me. Because you, you like have to do the knot. Well, you have to do the overhand knot yeah, on the Turkish. Yeah, the hitch. So Whoops. The half hitch. Yeah, the, <laughs> the half hitch on the Turkish. But 
I don't know. I didn't feel like that was, I don't know. I guess maybe it's just because it's new to me. It could be. Yeah. Oh, I like my Turkish a whole lot. But when you take the little legs out, you get the center pool ball, which is nice. Very cool. So, um, and I was trying, I was trying to figure out how much weight the spindle could hold comfortably because as you add weight, that weight becomes part of the tool. Um, and so mm-hmm. I was listening to some back episodes of Knit More Girls, and I think it was on either 248 or 249, I think. One of those two. They had Rachel from Knit Sense on, and she mm-hmm. said that she talked to the Jenkins folks, and they said that a good rule of thumb is three quarters of the weight of the spindle. So if your spindle is a half an ounce, then you can put three quarters of that weight on the spindle. So you could put three quarters of half an ounce, whatever that is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm terrible. It's 25 plus <laughs> 5 was almost 40 grams or whatever. Okay, I'm sorry, I suck at math. Let's say your spindle is an ounce. You could put 0.75 of an ounce on your spindle before it starts becoming counterproductive. So, and that's according to Rachel of Knit Sense, who was on the Knit More Girls. So, um, I enjoyed it, actually, and um, I will probably take this with me to Rhinebeck just to do a little, you know, take a rest from walking around and eating, because that's pretty much what I plan to do at Rhinebeck, and just spindle a little, so. I love the maple syrup cotton candy at Rhinebeck. That's my favorite. Yeah, that was pretty good last year. So, that's pretty much all the spindles, or all the spinning that I got done this week. I'm prepping for Spinzilla, and again, we'll talk more about that in favorite things. But, we have a book review. We do. I'm so excited to review this book. I feel like I've been waiting for it for forever. Well, we kind of (laughs) have. So, back in late March. Yeah, earlier this year sometime. Um, Rebecca Danger contacted us and asked us if we wanted to test knit for this book. And we, of course, said yes, because it's a very awesome book. So we are a little bit biased yeah, towards it. <laughs> Just a little. And we'll show you some of the patterns that we ended up testing as we go through. So this is our third book. It um, is. And this one's 50 Yards of Fun. It's designed to use up the little bits and bobs of leftover yarn that you have. And it calls for, or it calls for, it is priced at $16.99, and it is published by Martingale Press. Mm -hmm. And one of my first favorite things that I really like about this is the on the how this book works. Oh, you can talk about that first. I like the visual effects. I I, I love all the, you get sort of a quick glance at all the creativity and the different ways that she uses the simple shapes to create the animals, so... But I really like on the um, how this book works. It has a chart of not only like yarn, so like fingering weight, what needle she used for it, but also what size eyes, safety eyes that she used with it. And that's something I always struggle with mm-hmm. is sizing the safety eyes correctly. So I really appreciate that. An approximate height for. Um, the head-to-toe body of the critters in here. So I think that's very, very cool. Um, She goes through a bunch of tutorials, including doing legs two at a time and picking up stitches, Mm -hmm. um, which is very cool. She's got really clear pictures on how to do certain things. Very good, big visual photos. And so this book utilizes basic body shapes. So the first one is the basic peanut body. And so it's set up in kind of chapters like that. So this is every critter that's made out of the basic peanut body. And my absolute favorite, and you could just use a basic little peanut body body to do whatever, Mm -hmm. but I love the jackalope. Totally my favorite thing, (laughs) probably in the whole book. And will be knit by me. I just think it is adorable, and I want one for my desk at work. I like the itty bitty baddie. I think that that is super cute and a great way to just get creative on the body. That little peanut body, I think it's adorable. And then the bit, the little robot, the bitty bot. I could totally see our friend Sarah email her son Eli just yeah. digging that in a big way. 
So very cute. This book does use a variety of um, yarns, but primarily worsted weight. Mm -hmm. um, so the Bitty Bot uses Rios. The Bat uses Sweet Georgia Yarns Worsted. And the Jack Loop uses Lorna's Laces Shepherd Worsted. But like any of Rebecca's patterns, you really could just change the weight of the yarn. And she goes into that in the yep. first chapter mm -hmm. just to change the size. So any kind of scraps would work. So the next body shape is the basic bowling pin body. And that is what all of my test knits were used. Uh, they used was the basic bowling pin body. Oh, cool. And so she I has... I like the raccoon. Yep. He's super cute. She has the raccoon. She has the small peanuts elephant, which... <laughs> He's cute. I am Oh, raccoon. look at that! <laughs> and this is... Um, I don't remember the yarn. But anyway, um, she, she talks about how you can dress your animals to make that little bit of yardage go even further by using an alternate yarn to just extend um, how little you need of each color. So I did the elephant. There's the mini monster bowling, which I think is super cute. And in the very back of the book, she uh, transforms the bowling ball into a triple mm -hmm. by using um, furry fun, yarn. Fun fur, yeah. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. I like this little love slug. He isn't one that I test in it, but I really like so him. So cute. And the fly spec box. He's cute too. And I did him. This is oh, look little, at that. With his little tail. Oh. He looks a little wonky because his nose doesn't have a um, button on it. And the bantam bunny. And I did the Bantam Bunny as well. So oh, cool. Oh, so cute. Yes. So I've been sitting on these FOs for a while. <laughs> but he's so cute. I love his ears and how they the density of, of the size of needle that you use makes them stand up on their own. I don't, you didn't have to stuff a wire in there or anything. So That's so cool. Really I clever. might have to knit him. The next shape is the basic uni body. There's all these good guys. I love the monkey. He's so cute. <laughs> I also like the. I can see Kobe liking the mini ninja. Yeah, I like the ninja. There's the monkey, and there's a mouse. There's a squirrel so who uses fun fur as the tail. Yeah, I think everyone needs to knit those for Amy Beth. <laughs> there's a cat in pajamas. Yes, he has a little blanket <laughs> in the other picture. Yes, so cute. Um, just a ton of very the little adorable. <laughs> and then um, the last shape is the basic biscuit body, and this is what I test knit out of the section. Mm -hmm. Um, so I test knit four, and I don't know where the fourth went, but I have three of them <laughs> somewhere. I also can't find my lumberjack's hat. Oh no! So, <laughs> the first one, it's around here somewhere, is Paul Bunyan. And this is my Paul Bunyan. <laughs> and he does it. have a hat. He looks a little drunk because his eyes are... <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Why must you hurt my stuffy's feelings? <laughs> I just don't think stuffies are your strong suit, my girlfriend. That's all. I like how his suspenders crisscross in the back. I love the beard. I think the beard is a great addition to him. The beard has a mouth in it. Can you see? Oh, no, I couldn't. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's awesome. Hello, Nicky. <laughs> so that's him, and he was made primarily out of um, Malabrigo worsted with some cascade for his boots. And his hat, which is around here somewhere. It keeps falling off. I can make him tons of different little hats. And then I also made the little, um, so that's Paul Bunyan. And then I made the not-so-big guinea pig. <laughs> so, Aww. and he's out of Malabrigo and then some single. And his nose, I ordered noses, were much too tiny for his face. <laughs> I don't care. He's so cute. Nobody's judging your little guys. I like the pithy platypus. Yes. <laughs> I think that's super I did cute. not make him, but he is. I like the hippo, too. Yeah. I'm going to have to make a hippo. 
Very cute. Um, one of the patterns in here uses our good friend Sarah of another Crafty Girls yarn because she's list listed in the index. Oh, cool! Uh, I think it was one of the best, like one of the basic bodies. Let me figure out if I can find it. No, that's just Sweet Georgia. Um, There's maybe not. You maybe I'm just making unicorn, things up. Didn't you? I did. Hold on. I'm searching now. You? Yeah, the basic peanut body uses Sarah's yarn. Oh, okay. See? Uh, yeah, I made a unicorn. And I used sock yarn doubles so I can make him sparkly. No. Because unicorns should sparkle. They should. Why wouldn't they? Yours is almost um, the exact same colors as the book. Yeah, that was done on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's my little unicorn. Very cute. The unicorn didn't come out too bad. No, I agree. I think it. No, I think it's wonderful. <laughs> you are such a horrible liar. <laughs> There's also a fractal fish. Fractional. Just super. Yeah. He's kind of fractal. She has He's the very cute. Size phone friend. You can. Fit that's your the other one that I made. Him. Yep, that's the other one I made. He's around here somewhere. He's holding something. He might be on my dresser. But yeah, he's super cute as well. And um, I think I sewed his eyes on. I don't think I used safety eyes on him. And then there's the basic stitchy body. And that has all of these. And there's some color work in this section that I find really, really fun. So there is a little dinky doggy. He's super cute. I like the yeah big yeti. I like that he's in fun <laughs> fur. I think that's perfect. Yep. Um, I actually have a skein of fun fur that I might use on him. And then I have olive sized owl. I think Amy would like that. So cute. Of yes. Knitting in circles. I agree. There's the weensy woodland French. <laughs> I want to put arms on him. And that's the thing that she talks about in this book is how you can kind of make them your own so mm -hmm. if you think he needs arms you should just add arms yes. so um and then there is the slight swimmer super cute yeah. and the puny pocket playmate which i think is a great way to give like a gift card or cash because he's yep. got a little pocket in him and that's what rebecca talks about is to do a little extra because sometimes people feel weird about just giving money and it would be yep. cute to you could spend a day knitting this little guy and give it with the gift or the money and the cell phone dude too mm -hmm. she talks about that in the back so the really really cool thing about this book is beyond the basics in the back tells you a bunch of different ideas of how you can use mm -hmm. um how you can modify these like make the basic biscuit body into a ghost or, or, I'm sorry, the basic stitchy body, or make a mobile using bats, or egg add cozy, one, yep. or matryoshka dolls, or the triple, yep. or just adding one of these to as a packaging to a gift. Yep. So, really, really enjoy this book. I definitely think it's worth the seventeen dollars, yep. even though Leslie makes fun of my little monsters. <laughs> And this is Rebecca. If you've never met her, she is a doll, and this is her third book. I know, I'm sure that we will see more from her in the future, because she's just like a creative force, like a tornado of crazy ideas, and I love it. So, um, we were sent she's this super fun. book by Martingale, because we were test knitters, so um, I love it. I love all the cute little things you can do, and they really don't take a lot of time. It's just a little fiddly making dolls, so... But I love it. Stuffy, see ya. Yep. And a good way to use up scraps. Mm -hmm. Like, super awesome way to use up scraps. So, 50 Yards of Fun by Rebecca Danger. It's seven, it retails for around $17. Published by Martingale. And it's lots of fun. So, there's our book review for this week. We are on to favorite things. Yep. Where we can talk about all the spinzilla in the world. So if you don't know what Spinzilla is, it's too late to join for this year, but it's basically, uh, it's this is the inaugural year, and this year only people in the U.S. and Canada can join. I think they're working on a way to include everyone else next year, 
Um, but the idea is to try to spin as much as you possibly can in one week. Um, and it, all the it's like a ten dollar fee to participate, and all that money goes to the needle arts mentoring program, which brings the teaching of needle arts to um, areas where it may not other go, otherwise go, like underprivileged kids and that sort of thing. So um, people are really super getting competitive already. Like it, happens, <laughs> it starts like the spinning. You're allowed to start midnight tonight on the sixth of October, technically 12.01 a.m. on Monday the 7th, Eastern Standard Time. So um, I'm not going to stay up until midnight <laughs> to start tonight. I'll start tomorrow. Um, the way that they are measuring your yardage is singles. So a lot of people plan on only spinning their singles. Um, they'll weigh their bobbin before they use it. They'll weigh it after it's full. They'll take, a, they're using like these, um, what are they called? You can actually take off like five yards, so knit, use a nitty knotty to measure five yards, mm -hmm. weigh it on a scale, so, and do the math off of right. that, which might be how I do some of it. Yeah, I might do um, some of it that way if I, I don't know, maybe. Like, I honestly intend to ply most of my yarn that week, um, but you lose time doing that, right? So yeah. there's there's that to consider as well, but I only have so many bobbins. Like, I have storage bobbins as well, but you're taking time to wind stuff off onto storage bobbins, too. So, like, the lesser of two evils, you know? Yeah. So, it's just personal choice. But we'll see. I mean, I got some <clears throat> giant floofy Romney at Woolbears, and it's in true roving format. So, I'm hoping to long draw this, because long draw is so much faster than the inchworm that I usually use. Yeah. Um, so I got eight ounces of this. I'm sure I'll work through that. And then I'll move on to bats and some of my Into the World because it's already in roving format. and um, it's, it's in top format, right? Well, her, Into the World. Uh, well, I don't know. The ones that are just squished in the bag, aren't they? That's in top. Is it? Okay. Well, I don't know. I plan to find some of my less slick fibers and spin those. Uh -huh. um, I'm going to go through and try to get it all t in one place tonight so that I can use it as or find it as I go through it. Um, Laura has a goal for Spinzilla. I do. Thanks for calling me out. You told me <laughs> I earlier. I didn't realize it was a secret. I wasn't tell it. it was a personal goal, not like a let's throw it out okay. on the internet goal. So but that's okay. No, it's cool. We can skip it. It's fine. No, I want to spin 3,000 yards of singles. So we'll see if that happens. I have, yeah, I have, so things that I'm thinking about spinning. Um, I am looking at some longer, um, some longer staple fibers because they l need less twist and I can go a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. So I have some Wensleydale from Hello Yarn. Oh, and good. I've never spun Wensleydale before, but I think it'd be a fun, quick spin. Mm -hmm. I have some Cordale from Insta World. I have some Cordale as well. And I have eight ounces of um, CVM Romney Dale. Where did you get that? So I got it from a farm. Um, I can't remember the name off the top of my head. But I got it to kind of play with. It's um, It smells like farm. It's awesome. <laughs> but I wanted to try this um, type of fiber. So let me pull up a sample length. So it's fairly short. It's not super long. But it's like a three inch stable length. It's got lots and of bounce. Yep, it's got lots of bounce. Um, but um, I wanted to try CVM Romney Dale, and I found this, so I thought it'd be fun. Um, yep, so that's it for goals. I have, so, well, I have something else that came in the mail that I'm going to save for later. It was a club, but now I don't know where it went. It'll turn up. Ma'am, my room is a mess. <laughs> I bet mine's messier. I don't know. Oh, it's right here. So I got my club shipment of Dripping Fiber Studios. It's my last bat club from her because she's taking a break for a little while. Pretty. So I'm going to probably spin those as well. And I have a bunch of her bat clubs. So if that goes fast and smooth, I might spin 
three or four other ones. I have a bunch of bats. I've been very um, hesitant about spinning any because I always feel like I'm going to screw them up. But I might break into those if I get through because I'm not going to want to do any like merinos or polewarts this week because for me those require more attention to detail mm -hmm. like and so I, I want things that I can go quicker on. I understand that. So we are extending the uh, barking or the um, extra skein. Is that right? Yep, because the episode didn't go up till. Oh, okay. When did it go up? Thursday? Wednesday night. Wednesday mm -hmm. night. So the extra yarn, um, extra yarn uh, kit. Kits. I was looking for it. It's done here. <laughs> the Happy Again kit. That contest will continue on through next Sunday, but we have a new contest, which I'm super stoked about. Mm -hmm. And I, Leslie and I liked this so much that we got our own. We, we purchased our, our own. own. <laughs> <laughs> because I get like, this is the first time. In a while. Um, in a while. Well, no, I like all the things. Well, but, I mean. <laughs> but I was like, I should keep this for me. <laughs> Because it's so cool. So what this is, it is the Metro Pop Bath. It is done by the wonderful people who do the Top Shelf Totes, which is the yarn... Um, yarn Pop? Yarn Pop. And I, I have one right over there. Like the Gadgety Bags and yep. the um, Totables. Yep. And they have amazing, fun stuff. And so this is no different. But this... I am very into. Yeah, she did for a lot of reasons this year. She did. So first, it's got a cool print, and it's got like a ripstop nylon yeah. type cover, which they're, I love. They're it's very nice heavy duty. They're built to last. Yep. And then you open it, and it's got that cool pop of yellow. Mm -hmm. And I think every single interior yeah. is yellow, mm -hmm. which is nice because you can see what's in the bag. There are two, and it buttons with a. Uh, uh, snap. What are those called? Yeah, snap right there, which you can close single-handed, because I tried. <laughs> um, and it's got two zipper, individual zipper pockets right here. So perfect for my cell phone. Mm -hmm. Or notions. my, yeah, notions, um, lavish bar, scissors, whatever small mm -hmm. thing that you want to fit and have pretty easy access to. And then there's the first zipper pocket. And it actually goes open. So it doesn't open all the way, which I really appreciate because I don't want it, like, Floppy. I hate it when bags flop open. Mm -hmm. That drives me, and then all my stuff falls out. But it's got a ton of not pockets, but this little cord that you can stick things in. Like so, pins or needles. Yeah, like a pair of scissors fits nicely. Mm -hmm. Or paintbrushes, or pens, or um, any small uh, spindles would work great. Oh, yeah. Any small tool that you want to fit on the outside. And then, but wait, there's more. <laughs> Oh, you know what else I would love to put in this outside pocket are my headphones when, like, I'm commuting mm -hmm. places. That would be perfect. Then there's the bigger zipper pocket, which has a purple zipper. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's meant for Laura. It's meant for me. It's got two big, deep pockets on that side and enough room to throw a project in there. And it actually has, like, a little flat bottom to it. Mm -hmm. I just totally hit my you laptop. Did, Sorry, okay. y'all. And then on the other side, there is enough room for a small laptop or an iPad cool. to fit in. So um, I love how I can keep this kind of like, for me, it's perfect because I have big bags. You <laughs> like, do, and you cannot I, lie. I take a lot of stuff with me everywhere I go. Um, Usually in my purse at any certain amount of time, there is my wallet, there is my iPad, at least one, two, two, three knitting projects. And a Notions pouch. Um, a Notions pouch to go with those knitting projects. Four to five lip glosses. 
um, an extra tape measure, probably a hardcover book that I'm reading for work, um, a lot of stuff, yeah. and I can see all my stuff sitting in here. There's also a back pocket. So if you're traveling and you want access to your phone really easily, or documents, yeah, like you can see like a passes, pattern getting stuffed in there. Yeah. Or um, anything like that. And that also fastens with a snap, which you can close one-handed. Just, I love this bag. It's got and an I'm, adjustable strap, right? So you can yeah. wear it cross body. Yep. And it's padded up here, mm -hmm. which I love as well. And it's just got, you know, it, you can carry a 13-inch laptop in here. Yeah. So... And these and, retail for $96. Yep. And we're giving one away. We're giving this one away. Yep. This isn't staying with us. Yeah. So. But, but we did get our own. So they are coming. <laughs> we did buy our own. <laughs> I got one in green. What color did you get? I think I got that one that you're, I, I liked <laughs> the, the red way. one, but I'm not a polka dots girl. So I think I got that one. Cool. Um, so there are four or five different mm -hmm. colors. I think there's four. Which is very cool. I'm opening my email right now if I can find. There it is. And what are we doing for people to enter for this? So Lori sent me a lovely link to their website. And what I'm going to have y'all do is there's um, four. There's a striped pattern, the green. Oh, the stripe is what I got. Okay. Yeah. And then the lattice and then the polka dot. Yep. So, um... What I'm going to have y'all do is go over to the website, and she's got a ton of very, like, a whole thing about all the features, and I want you to go and look and say what your favorite feature is. Or you can just say one that we featured on the show. Yeah. So, nice heavy-duty bag. I really like it. I'm so glad one's on its way to me. <laughs> I think it might replace my Lexi Barnes. Yeah, I think it's going to replace my Jordana page um, just for when I'm not carrying around my laptop because my Jordana page is my the, laptop bag. This is actually smaller than my Lexi Barnes. <laughs> That's true, it is. <laughs> so it might become my go-to-work bag. And then I'll save my Lexi still when I travel because that has a couple extra pockets yeah. in it. That's just kind um, of like an Amy Butler weekender bag. Your Lexi is similar to the Amy Butler weekender. Yeah, that's what I carry every day. Yeah. So, um, I just, I love this bag and it's definitely going to suit my needs, I feel like, perfectly. Yeah. So, um, again, we'll have the contest on Ravelry. It's going to be one entry per person. No chatter, please. Must be a member um, of the group. Must be a member of the group and it will close next Sunday. Today is the 6th, so it will close on the 13th when we record, as well as the extra yarn. So we'll um, do two giveaways for next week. Yep. Two giveaways. Um, I was trying to think what else I had to talk about. I got a sock club shipment. Oh. What sock club are you in? Barking Dog Yarns. Oh, cool. Because I designed the pattern for her. So oh, I traded it for... pretty. It's like a slate blue. Yeah, it's, like, it's called denim. Oh, cool. So I think I'm going to use with it, it's um, her 100% fine wool superwash 400 yards. So I think I'm going to do, I have a bunch of um, Noro Silk Garden Sock. Mm -hmm. So I might do like something stripey with this. You can't see my finger yeah. tapping. This <laughs> and the Noro to make it very um, like soft and drapey. Yeah, maybe a, a, probably a shawl. Cool. So, because with it being super wash merino only, yeah, I, I like some nylon in my socks. Yeah. Although this has a very nice tight twist. It does. So, I love it. It's a pretty solid. Is there anything else that we needed to talk about? What else? What else have you been up to this week? Not much. Work has been work, and that's pretty much it. Like I've been knitting a lot this week. I've been. Avoiding cleaning my house, which, you know, I'm getting ready for Rhinebeck, and... Um, That's right, you have Rhinebeck coming up in a couple weeks. I do, and I plan to just take it really easy. I don't have any must-haves. I will not be at the Jenny the Potter line at 7.30 in the morning. Um, although her mug this year is really beautiful. It's got a blue bird on it. It's, it's a Aww. beautiful mug, but I'm not going. And... Um, I plan to just sort of walk around and 
meet people and sample food and watch punk cool. and chunkin and awesome silly stuff i've no like agenda no must-haves so cool that'll be nice to be just low-key walking around so yeah that'll yeah. be super nice but yeah that's pretty much it I, I, and that's your next event coming up and then my next event coming up is the knitting pipeline retreat in march yep unless something comes up before that yeah there could always be something you could go down to rock days and see amy and darren when's that uh usually it's in january that's true i don't know when though i just remember it's in january hmm. but anyway i think we're just stretching for time at this point yep and i'm okay <laughs> so with us having a short go. show because i think next week will be long with us talking about spinzilla so Cool. Um, so you guys or have super a short, wonderful. Because there'll be nothing to show. Do what? <laughs> I said we're super short because there'll be nothing, no knitting to show. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you should probably. Yeah, there won't be a lot of knitting. I might have a little bit from knitting during meetings at work, but probably not because I plan to spin as much as I possibly can. Hopefully, I'll have the socks done. So yeah. that'll be nice. So all right. Well, y'all have a wonderful week, and we'll see you again on the thirteenth. Bye. Bye.